cells need to have a way to deal with hypotonic environments, and there are several ways that an organism will do it. Freshwater paramecium live in hypotonic environments. So to avoid becoming so full of water that they burst and die, they have special contractile vacuoles which collect excess water and then contract to push water out. Multicellular organisms like you and me have a different way of dealing with hypotonic environments. These cells will pump solutes out of the cytosol to bring the outside concentration closer to the inside concentration. Plants, as you know, really like and need water. They take in water through osmosis in their roots, and they actually prefer to have their cells in a hypotonic solution. Plant cells in hypotonic solution are turgid and firm and full of water, which is what they prefer. Cells in an isotonic solution are actually flaccid and bendable, which is not good for the plant. If they're in a hypertonic solution, they will completely wilt because all of the water rushes out of the vacuole and it loses turgor pressure. Turgor pressure is the pressure that water molecules exert against the cell wall. Under hypertonic conditions, the cell membrane peels away from the cell wall. The cells shrinking away from the cell wall is called plasmolysis. Now, some animal cells don't have a way to deal with hypertonic or hypotonic solutions. And in a hypotonic solution, they have a problem. When a red blood cell is in a hypotonic solution, it swells and eventually could burst. The bursting of cells is called cytolysis. This could also happen if a saltwater egg was placed in a freshwater tank. So don't make that mistake. Lots of molecules need a little bit of help to get through the cell membrane, either because they're too large or they're too polar to get past those hydrophobic tails. That's where facilitated diffusion comes in. It's a type of passive transport where molecules pass through the membrane proteins. The molecules pass through in four basic steps. First, the molecule binds to the carrier protein. Second, the carrier protein changes shape. Third, the protein releases the molecule to the outside. And fourth, the protein returns to its original shape. There are also ion channels, which are membrane proteins that only allow one specific type of ion through. This one is a calcium ion channel and will only let calcium ions through. Other ions will have their own type of channel. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.